My Savior is the Lord and King. He has control of everything. He loves me and he bids me sing. He gives his song to me. Jesus is the song of life. Jesus is the song of joy. Jesus is the song of love. Jesus gives his song to me. He calms my hurts and dries my tears. He gives me strength to face my fears. He sends his grace through all my years. He gives his song to me. Jesus is the song of life. Jesus is the song of joy. Jesus is the song of love. Jesus gives his song to me. Savior Jesus, I'll adore my weary soul, he will restore. I'll sing his praise forevermore, he'll give his song to me. Jesus is the song of life, Jesus is the song of joy, Jesus is the song of love. Jesus gives his song, Jesus gives his song, Jesus gives his song to me. Grace and peace and love and fellowship to you in the name of our triune God. Welcome to our worship this morning. We are glad to have you present here with us and present here with us with our live stream. Welcome. A couple of announcements to share with you this morning. Today at 1 o'clock we have our teacher training in preparation for Rally Day. Rally Day is September 12th, where we'll go back to our regular schedule with Sunday school at 9.30 and worship at 10.30. So today at one o'clock, we have our teacher training to prepare for that. So we look forward to all of our teachers um, joining us this afternoon at one o'clock. Next Sunday, we will be collecting a special offering as we celebrate Mission Sunday. You all are aware that our missionary um, in um, South Sudan, sorry, I just went front blank where Lisa was. Lisa Wagstaff has retired and the Outreach Committee has selected uh, new missionaries that we are sponsoring now. They are working on the at the border um, of the United States and Mexico, which was something our congregation was wanting to get involved in. And so we thought, what a perfect matchup and relationship for these to be our new missionaries. So you will learn about them next week, and we will have a special offering collected for them. We continue our prayers for Kelly, our music director, as she continues to heal from her foot surgery. And Wei, our pianist, um, who is also employed by High Point University, has convocation today. So she was not able to be here with us. So we are thrilled to welcome back Cyrus. And thank you for that beautiful prelude, Cyrus. <laughs> 
Are there any other announcements to be made? Then let us worship God. Please join with me in our responsive call to worship. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with celebration. Come before him with shouts of joy. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. We belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his own pasture. Enter his gates with thanks. Enter his courtyards with praise, because the Lord is good. His loyal love lasts forever. His faithfulness lasts generation after generation. Our prayer of adoration is partly responsive. O living God of past and future, we praise you for this present moment. Fill us with your joy and empower us with your Holy Spirit, that our strength may be renewed to sing a new song of your glory in a world which longs for your justice and peace. Almighty God, maker of all things, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, giver of life, have mercy on us. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Listen to this assurance of forgiveness. You did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. At this time, we invite those in our sanctuary to stand and stay in place and turn and greet one another and offer uh, signs of peace to each other and welcome. And for those with us online, we ask that you do the same. Stand and offer peace. Peace be with you and also with you.
good morning. Let me see those. Let me see that one. What, what's on there? Unicorns. Oh, how cool, cool is that? What about yours? Hmm? Polka dots. And you've got stuff hanging on it, right? All kinds of things. Lena, you just got a cool design on yours, don't you? All right. Well, so what do you carry in your backpack? Whoop, careful. Oh, you got a button on yours, too. I like that. What's in your backpack? School supplies. Okay. Got anything? Uh, you got a frog in there or anything? No? No frogs? You have a puppy in there? Oh, you better open it up and give it some air. Oh, I see a stuffed animal puppy. That is cool. Well, so today this is blessing of the backpacks day. I should have brought my backpack. It's kind of boring, though. It's just gray. There's nothing in there but some paper and that kind of stuff. It's boring. So who made everything? Who made the world? God made the world. And God made that world so that we could have joy. And he also made it so that we could be at peace. Are you at peace? Are you excited to go back to school? You're excited? Oh, that is awesome. I'm so glad you're excited to do that. So do you know that, that you are created by God and that you bring him joy? Did you know that you bring God joy and happiness? That is an awesome thing. That's what we're made we're made with joy, and we're made to give God joy, and we're made to go out into the world and share joy. Do you share joy with everybody every day? You do? That is good. I wish I could say I did it every day. I don't. But you know what? Even when I don't, God finds joy in me, and God finds joy in you. So are you always perfect and nice to your sisters? Mm. I shouldn't have asked that question, should I? Yeah, yeah, I know. But even when you're not, God finds joy with you. And God loves you always, no matter what. So that is an awesome thing to remember. God gives you joy. You are God's joy. And he made us to go out into the world and share that joy. And when we do that, we help people be peaceful, at peace. Sometimes people get a little bit nervous or anxious or whatever, God, God is trying to give us peace. Now, I have something here Miss Elizabeth shared with me that I can give you to put in your backpack. We got two different pictures. Which one would you like? You want that one? Which one would you like? There we go. Now, I hope you can put that in your backpack, and when you see it, when you're taking your books out or your pencils out, look at it and remember that God loves you. It says, go out in joy and be led back in peace. And on the back of it, it says, beloved child of God. That means Clara, beloved child of God. Anna, beloved child of God. Lena, beloved child of God. Each of us is a beloved child of God. And may this year give you God's unending joy and comforting peace. So we want you to have a great school year, to have joy and to share joy with others. Okay? All right. So will you help me say the Lord's Prayer? All right. We're going to start. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, guys. Have a great, great, great school year.
for illumination. God of justice, peace, and righteousness, come into our midst. Breathe your breath, your spirit of prophecy, your energy, your enlivening, your imagination on us. Wake us up. Open our eyes. Unplug our ears that we may hear, that we might see, that we might sing your praise and know your worth that we might follow the ways of your extraordinary kingdom. Amen. The scripture reading is Ephesians 5, 13 through 20. But everything exposed to the light is revealed by the light. Everything that is revealed by the light is light. Therefore we say, wake up, sleeper. Get up from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So be careful to live your life wisely, not foolishly. Take advantage of every opportunity, because these are evil times. Because of this, don't be ignorant, but understand the Lord's will. Don't get drunk on wine, which produces depravity. Instead, be filled with the spirit of the following ways. Speak to each other with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music to the Lord in your hearts. Always give thanks to God, the Father of everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. I continue sharing with you this week some things that struck me and stayed with me during my time of sabbatical. Today's topic and sermon title is Keep Singing. Keep Singing. So many of the Psalms speak about singing to the Lord. Make a joyful noise. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Praise God with trumpet sound. Praise God with lute and harp. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Woo! Strings and pipe, clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of Psalms is sometimes called the first hymn book of the church. And our Ephesians passage that Jeff just read makes reference to singing the Psalms. Be filled with the Spirit as you sing Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times. But the book of Psalms is not just about celebration and joy. Sometimes the songs are lament. How long, O oh Lord, will you be silent? There is one in particular, Psalm 137, when the Israelites had been captured by the Babylonians, Jerusalem had been destroyed, and the people were sent to exile. Their captors had heard of their marvelous songs of Zion and ordered them, ordered them in exile to sing a song rejoicing to sing a song of praise. Psalm 137 is Israel's response. Alongside Babylon's streams, there we sat down, crying because we remembered Zion. We hung our lyres up in the trees there because that is where the captors asked us to sing. Our tormentors requested songs of joy. Sing us a song about Zion, they said. But how? How could we possibly sing the Lord's song on foreign soil? Sometimes it is hard to sing. Sometimes it's hard to sing just because you want to sing, but things like a pandemic make it unsafe to do so. I have heard so many of you, from so many of you, that you really miss singing. 
and I do too. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't realize how much I miss something until I have it back. And for six days this summer, while at the Montreat Worship and Music Retreat, everyone fully masked, all the doors and windows of Anderson Auditorium wide open, the big fans going, we got to sing. This was before the Delta surge. Only during the opening worship, I really wasn't able to sing that much because I was just moved to tears, realizing how much my heart and soul missed singing these praises with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And here I was surrounded with brothers and sisters that I didn't even know, but it didn't matter. I knew they were my brothers and sisters, and I knew to whom we were singing our songs of praise. We express so much in singing. Yes, our joy and our praises, our laments and our sorrows, but we also remind ourselves of God's story and our place in it. We remember the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us. We declare our faith and we sing what we know to be true in the depths of our being. You know, singing what we believe or singing of God's faithfulness when we aren't particularly feeling close to God, when our head and our hearts are not in alignment, often speaks to our soul in a very powerful way that words alone cannot do. That thinking alone cannot do. It's very powerful. The Apostle Paul speaks in several of his letters about us believers being one body. Though we are individuals, we are, we, we are the one body of Christ. Ephesians 4, 6, right before the passage we heard, says there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. Have you ever thought about what is going on with our physical bodies when we sing? Not only are we singing the very same words, at least most of the time, <laughs> singing the very same words at the very same time, which is pretty amazing in and of itself, right? That brother or sister in Christ beside you that you don't always agree with is right there with you, singing the very same thing. Our individual voice is now part of the whole, the one body. But not only that, we are breathing together. Breathing in and out as one body. And have you ever noticed that singing often lifts your spirit? There have actually been studies about how music can lift our moods, combat depression, improve blood flow in ways similar to statins, lower levels of stress-related hormones, such as cortisol, and ease pain. Music can improve the outcomes for patients after surgery. A recent study reported in Nature Neuroscience even demonstrated that levels of the feel-good chemical dopamine in the brain rose up to 9% when people listened to music they enjoyed. I don't know if Nancy Moore is listening online, but she spoke of that often, feeling good 
feeling better, spirits lifted after choir practice. Early in my pastoral calling, I noticed how when leading worship at a nursing home, the residents would be, most of them, wheeled in. They appeared to be sleeping. They were not fully present. But when we would sing a hymn, all of a sudden there was life in those vacant eyes. Slumped bodies became a little bit more alert. Silent voices and forgetful minds were singing all of the words to the hymns by memory, like a switch had been flipped. I love how in the early in the pandemic, several musicians, local and national and Cyrus included, would share their love and gift of music with us on social media. Didn't that lift your spirit? When you saw that, it was a beautiful gift to us. Singing at Montreat made me realize how much I miss singing and reminded me of how important singing is to our corporate worship. I was part of the adult choir that week in Montreat, and two of those songs in particular got into the very fiber of my being. Have you ever heard of an earworm? A line or a section of a song that gets in your head and you can't get it out. <laughs> you sing it all the time, no matter what you are doing over and over again. Well, I had two earworms from that week partly because the music was so powerful, partly because the words were so powerful. One of them spoke about the darkness in our world, about the injustices in our world. It spoke about when love is gone, when peace is gone, when honor is gone, when justice is gone. And after each verse that addressed one of those darknesses, the chorus said, I will not hate. And I will not fear. In our darkest hour, hope lingers here. We not only sang it, we moved to it during the chorus I'd sing it, except I only know the alto line, and that won't make much sense. And when we got, I'm sorry, we would, we would sway to the verse, and we got to the chorus, we just spread our arms. I will not hate, and I will not fear. In our darkest hour, love, hope lingers here. Yes, I believe this. I will not return hate for hate or fear for fear or anger for anger because I know who is the last word and what is the last word. And it is not evil or darkness or hate, but love. It is Jesus Christ coming in the flesh doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves and telling us love and hope have the last word. I had so hoped by this time that we would be able to do a little singing together. Before the Delta surge, I had heard of some congregations that were fully masked, singing just the final song of the worship service, and then everyone would quickly exit to get out to the outside air. And we're going to get there, my brothers and sisters, one of these days. But knowing that we weren't there yet, I questioned my sharing this topic today. 
is it cruel to talk about the importance of singing together and how powerful singing as the body of Christ is, how it speaks to us in ways that we don't even fully understand and then not allow us to sing together? But then I thought, I don't want to forget the lesson I learned in Montreat. I don't want you to forget that. Even though you haven't been able to sing yet as the body of Christ. I want us to name and claim that pain. That we have missed that. That we lament. So while we can't sing together, we can keep singing. Sing in your shower. Sing in your car. Sing while you're outside. Keep singing and praising God. Tune in to your style of Christian music, whether it's gospel or classical or contemporary or hymns or whatever it is, and sing your songs to God. Make your earworm be something pleasing to God and something encouraging to your soul. Because what we put in is often what comes out. What type of music are you listening to? What music are you singing? So even though we can't sing and worship yet, keep on singing. I thank you that we're able to have a small choir that can sing for us. Thank you. Don't let the pandemic take music away from you. God gave us the gift of music, not only so we could sing together, not only so we could sing to God, but to lift our spirits, to encourage us, to remind us who we are and whose we are. We will sing together again, but until then, you keep singing. Amen. I'm so excited I was ready to go to the last song. <laughs> <laughs>
Let us pray. Gracious God, you alone are worthy of our worship and praise. When we offer our praise, what don't you already know? What haven't you already heard? What poetry or prose would be new or impressive or exceptional to you? What music has not yet moved upward and outward into the vastness of your being? We sing often to remind ourselves who we are and whose we are. Lord, may we keep singing. If not within the walls of the polished oak and stained glass sanctuary yet, may we keep singing along lakes and beaches and treetops and grassy fields. May we, may we remember what you have done, what you are doing, Lord, and what you will do. Transform our praise. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Show us again. Move in us again. It is in our thanksgiving for your actions. It is in craving your continued presence that we sing. That we offer you what you've already heard but you give us the gift of music that we may be reminded again and again. God of mercy, give us a consistent kindness and compassion for others. Keep us always tender-hearted, even when the world delivers difficult blows and setbacks to us. Teach us once again about your redeeming grace in order that we may learn, however slowly and however tentatively, how to forgive others. Teach us how to live abundantly into the future as victorious and expectant people, greeting each new day with eagerness and excitement as children and teachers and staff return to school, bless them and protect them, that they may go out in joy and be led forth in peace. Remind us that we are among your forgiven and beloved community. Lord, we present to you all who have special need of your grace today. Those recovering from illness or surgery, from hurricanes, tornadoes, fires, or earthquakes. Those in chaos and danger in Afghanistan. Keep them in your gracious care. And Lord, show us how to make the burdens of others lighter. Be with those who war and who are victims of war and grant to us a peaceful world. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Clap your hands with the trees of the field. Sing your songs to God. And may the love of Jesus and the grace of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. So the choir is going to sing Trees of the Field. You may have caught some of those lines in the children's message and in the benediction. 
It's our theme, not only for our blessing of the backpacks, but coming up in September for Rally Day. So this song is going to be following the benediction for the next several Sundays. And while you can't sing yet, you can clap your hands. So the trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands while you go out with joy. <laughs> All right, be ready to clap. Here we go. Thank you. 